Hi, this is Shane Smythe from Marketing Cloud Mojo. Today we'll be talking about Contact Builder. We'll be giving a brief overview of what Contact Builder is, and we'll also be going into attribute groups. We'll be talking a little bit about how attribute groups tie the data of Marketing Cloud together. So let's jump right into it. Today we're going to be talking about Contact Builder. Contact Builder is the backbone of Marketing Cloud. It's where all the information is connected into attribute groups and relationships. So we're going to dig right into it. If you go into the top, app navigation bar, you're going to see Audience Builder and Contact Builder. That's where we're going to spend the most of our time today. Once you load Contact Builder for the first time, it's going to come to the Data Designer. The Data Designer is where your attribute groups and your populations live. This is where we're going to spend the majority of the time today. We're going to kind of split out the learning of Contact Builder into probably three or four sessions. So today we're really going to focus on attribute groups and a little bit about populations. And then in the next couple of sessions, we'll go through contact configuration and, and uh, the view of the customer. But briefly, we're just going to go over to the All Contacts tab to kind of set the stage of what Contact Builder is. So Contact Builder, like I said, is a backbone of Marketing Cloud. It's where contacts are stored. We talked a little bit about contacts and subscribers in the past, but just to reference, every, uh, reference that for everyone to kind of be on the same page here, a contact is an individual inside of Marketing Cloud. This individual can be an email subscriber, it can be someone on the SMS channel, it can be someone on the push channel. All these channels can have individual subscribers and you can also have, or I should say contacts, since we're on Contact Builder, or a contact can have uh, multiple channels associated to it. So you can see right here that on the left hand side we have a couple different options here. We have our, some of our sources and our modified dates and in our all contacts. I'm going to click on all contacts and we're going to see that we have a whopping 127 contacts in this instance. And you'll notice that there's not a whole lot of information on this. Um, that's because we are pulling a lot of these people from our demo Salesforce instance, which don't have a lot of information in it. So you can see that they're, they're contact key and the contact key is the unique identifier of this contact. It can be the Salesforce 18 digit ID as you're seeing right here. It can be their email address, it can be uh, a unique identifier that's pulled in from a different system, it can be a many different things. Um, so it, you'll see that we have a contact key and then we don't have a lot of other information about these individuals. Uh, we can also search by the individual's key up here on the top, so that's one option. You can toggle through a couple pages here, but as you, you know, get into an actual sending environment, um, that's going to be really difficult. And then as you, we get further in our list here, you can see that we have a couple of contacts that have different random IDs here. Uh, and you can see a couple that have email address fields in here as well. As well. So uh, you can see kind of the, the variety of different contact keys that are available. You can also see the channels down here. You're not going to see any data right now because this is a demo instance. We don't have SMS and push hooked up. Maybe we'll do that in future uh, demos here. But if you had uh, SMS or mobile connect hooked up in your account and you were able to send text messages out to your individual contacts, you would actually see those individuals in this channel right here. So you can easily see a spread between your SMS, your mobile push subscribers, and your email channel. So you'll see that the majority of our contacts are in the email channel here. Okay, so that's a general overview of, of Contact Builder and kind of the view of the customer. When we start talking about how do you see a you know, 360 view of a customer and how do you do multi-channel and how do you make sure that you can send to people across multiple different channels, Contact Builder is how you do it. So let's pop back over to the data designer now. Okay, attribute groups. Think of attribute groups as a self-contained set of data extensions and relationships that map values and fields together that allow you to kind of extend your data model. So I'm going to pop into a, a couple here, and then we're going to actually create one as well, and I'll, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, pros and cons of doing it different ways. These are all the standard ones that come with your instance. So you'll notice that we have a mobile push, we have a mobile contact, we have email data, and we have a couple other predictive intelligence and other attributes gr attribute groups here. Uh, we also have the ability to create our own. I'm actually going to pop into this uh, Shane MC uh, integration one. This is the one that comes with your integration to a Salesforce instance. We're not gonna to dig too much into it today, but we are going to later, so I'm gonna briefly show you what that looks like here. We pop in this attribute group, it's gonna pop us into this data model here, and you can see that you start to see data extensions on uh, the view here, 
You can see all the fields inside of it. You can see how they map to each other. As we scroll down, you'll see that there are more data extensions as well. So this is kind of the view of what it looks like at a fully formed state. Okay, so now that we've seen that, let's go back and let's create our own. So we're gonna create an attribute group and we're gonna call this all contacts. And the purpose of us creating this all contacts uh, attribute group is to map some of the data extensions we've been working with together. So once we have this created, it's gonna be blank. You'll see on the left-hand side though that there is contacts over here. Think of this left-hand side as your all contact table. This is your master list of all the individuals in your account you can communicate with. What you're gonna do is the first level of the data extension you send in here is gonna be what maps to that all contact table. So I'll give you an example here. We're gonna go into our data extension that we've been using over the last couple of sessions called all contacts. And what we need to do in this screen right here is we need to map the left and right hand side together. So we're mapping all contacts, it's called customer data here, to our all contacts data extension on the right hand side. And we need to map the values that are going to be uh, synced up between each other. So if in our all contacts or all subscribers table, our ID is the subscriber key, which in our case is the Salesforce ID, um, you need to map the two of them together. So I will take contact key on the left hand side and I'll take subscriber key on the right hand side and now we've linked the two of them together. And so now we're able to extend our data model past just the customer data or the all context table into our all contacts, which gives us the ability to have first, last name and a couple other uh, values down here as well. A couple of notes here. You can see that they're both uh, primary keys. So that's, that's an important attribute here. You can also see that they have the same data type you are required to have your linking value, your linking field type, I should say, as a text, even though it's a number or some other type of situation. That's just a requirement here. So you have to make sure that they match. Otherwise, it will be grayed out on the right-hand side and you won't be able to do anything. One other thing on the top right-hand corner is the ability to map this from a one-to-one -one relationship and a one-to-many relationship. There's been a little bit of dispute over the last couple of releases of whether or not this feature works the way it should or not. I've had a couple of communications with a, a support agent over a couple of months that this feature actually doesn't work the way we think it does. Um, it's usually a best practice just to leave it at a one-to-one -one relationship unless you have a reason to leave it at, uh, to move it. And, and I would definitely check with your account executive or a, a support uh, agent before you move forward with that in production. So we're going to click Save. Uh, this is basically telling you that this is going to affect all of the journeys and triggers that are kind of attached to this data model. We're going to click Done. And once this saves, we're going to see that all contacts data extension mapped to our all contacts on the left-hand side. And we can see how it's mapped and at what relationship it's mapped. So once we have that, we have one layer of data extension here. So this would easily allow us to uh, work with this data extension and send journeys. I will just pause here for a second and say the main purpose of contact builder in an attribute group function is for journeys. Journeys use your attribute groups and this data and the relationships here in order to do customized uh, decision splits and a couple other things over there. So we're going to go in into that later in some of the use cases there and we'll probably reference some of the attribute groups we create right now. But we want to create w uh, one more layer for our demonstrations here today. Mm -hmm. So once we have the first layer of data extension in here, let's say that our use case is we want to send to all contacts who have been you know, in a specific store or purchased a specific amount. We don't have that information in our all contacts, so we need to add another relationship. So you can see now that we're extending it past the all contacts, now on the left-hand side, it is the all contacts. On the right-hand side, we're adding a new relationship. So we're gonna add our order data extension here, and we're gonna map the two together that have a common value. So we have a subscriber key on the left-hand side from our all contacts, and we have our subscriber key on the right-hand side. So that maps the two of them together. In this situation, this is actually a one-to-many relationship here between all contacts and orders. So that means on the left-hand side, there's gonna be one contact, and on the right-hand side, there can be multiple orders. Again, back to this toggle here, 
I've had a support agent tell me to leave it one-to-one -one because the one-to-many doesn't work the way we think it does. Um, it also tends to air out a, a little more than the one-to-one, -one, so we'll, we'll leave it one-to-many and we'll see if it, it, uh, does, if it gives us any problems here. Okay, so this proves my point here. So here's an error message that tells you to go reach out to support and tells you there's an error there. So uh, like I said, make sure you reach out to support before you use one to many. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna try to do this with our one to one. So I'm gonna refresh the page, make sure everything's cleared out from all those errors there. And it looks like it may have created it actually. So we do have a one to many here, but it gave us a weird message here. So uh, I'm not gonna repeat the whole support thing, but that's there. So now we have the ability to kind of extend this out into the orders table. So if we wanted to do a decision split in Journey Builder where we had our contacts coming through and we wanted to be able to determine if to send them down which path based on what their total of order was. Let's say that they're we want to check if their last order was above $100, and if they were, if it was above $100, we wanted to give them an email and a, and a text message, and if not, we wanted to just give them a text message, or, or whatever the combination may be. We now have that capability to do that with our order information inside of Journey Builder. So a couple other things here that are important to mention. As we're adding things to our attribute group, it's important that we have already mapped out our overall architecture and design of, of this uh, attribute group because modifying it later can have downstream effects. So I'm gonna pop into Email Studio real quick. And we're, go we're gonna go to our data extensions and we're gonna go to our all contacts you'll notice a different notification that's popped up now that we have this in our attribute group. It's saying that it's part of a data relationship and therefore we do not have the ability to edit the fields. So this is a key because if you add this to your attribute group and you need to modify it later, you're not able to unless you detach it first from your relationship. There's another catch here as well. If you, let's say, build an attribute group and then you use that inside of a journey, and you decide that you need to make a modification here later, if you decide to go change that relationship and remove this data extension, and then maybe add it back five minutes later, you have the potential of breaking your journey because the underlying structure of the data model was broken and then rebuilt differently. Um, so make sure you keep in mind that as you're launching journeys and as you're building data extensions and attaching it to attribute groups, that you think through the process first then launch your journey, and if you do need to make modifications, think about the downstream effects. Um, so I'm going to show one more thing in Contact Builder. Let's pop back over there. I'm gonna pop back into all contacts. Another thing to keep in mind is if you delete a first layer relationship here, it's gonna delete everything else too because there's nothing else holding it together. So if I were to remove this, and save it, you'll notice that now my attribute group is empty. So some little considerations here to kind of keep in mind, uh, but can be important as you're kind of launching this into production. Okay, so one more thing to, to point out inside of the data designer tab here. There is a tab for populations. Populations is a less common, less used uh, piece of data designer and a little bit more complex we're not gonna to go too much into it here, but there is a really good resource on the help doc page that I think everyone should read here. Um, it goes through the basics of data designer, it goes through one-to-one -one relationships, it goes through populations, one-to-many relationships, and a couple other really good things down here below. Um, it does explain the populations as a replacement of the root functionality relationship that we used to have earlier in a couple of releases you know, over a year ago. Um, and, and that used to be tied very closely to how Journey Builder worked. Um, from my experience, we haven't needed this as much in a, you know, more recent releases, but it'd be kind of good to go in here and refresh some of your information on populations. So that in a nutshell is attribute groups inside a contact builder. 
In the next session, we're actually going to go through contact configuration, contact deleting, and even Salesforce integrations into more detail. So stay tuned for more updates on those videos and subscribe and like any of the videos that you like.